Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing You're Cool 42 Day. Oh, You're Cool, You're Too Cool for Today. I totally mangled that name. <laughs> um, let's play c5 in this position against knight f3, and maybe we'll have another one of these like Schmid Benonis. Uh, no, we're going to have a normal Benoni, or a normal Banco Gambit, actually. You're too cool for today. Okay, so against this, um, it's possible to just play queen takes b6, but I'm going to try something a little funky, going a5 and trying to develop a bishop through a6. This is a idea I picked up a long time ago from uh, Fide Master Robbie Adamson from Tucson, Arizona. Shout out to Robbie if he's watching this. But uh, Robbie is a big Banco Gambit expert, and he taught me to play this opening when I was, uh, oh, maybe in eighth grade or so. And I used it for many years as my repertoire, so uh, I owe him a debt of gratitude or ingratitude because this opening is a little sketchy sometimes. <laughs> But um, this is one line he, he showed me when white plays b6. You can play a5 and try to get the bishop to a6 anyways. So like now we have a, a normal position where white has fianchettoed, but black hasn't lost a pawn. So in my book, this is already a win because I haven't had to gambit the Benko gambit pawn, basically. He's playing b7, trying to deflect. Um, I probably want my rook on the b-file anyways, so I don't see any problem with just playing rook b8 here and trying to recapture with the rook on b7 eventually. Not in a rush to take it. Like I said, I mean, it's not going anywhere. So probably I'll just complete my development first and wait and see how white handles this. Let's check my opponent's stats. He has a peak 15 minute rating of 2082. Um, lots of games played, closing in on 12,000 games for him. Hmm. Yeah, his ratings are all over the map. Uh, th this actually looks like a classic player who doesn't do well at shorter time controls because his one-minute rating is extremely low. Um, it's like it's 787. Yet he has a lot of games, and his five-minute rating is like somewhat higher. It's 1461. Um, in the past, I've actually, as many people do, um, looked at that as an indicator that the person might be cheating, but this player, I don't get any indication of that whatsoever, just based on how they're playing and how many games they played on ICC. Um, I think this is a player who just legitimately does not play well very quickly. So uh, we'll see what happens. Um, E4, I can try to play knight G4 and get the knight into E5. That's a pretty good plan, so I think I'll, I'll do that. Because if I take on B7, uh, they can go E5. And I don't like that so much. Yeah, so I'm going to play knight g4. Because getting the knight into e5 is justified in that this d3 square is so weak. And if I can like park my knight in there and, and hit the rook, hit the bishop, hit the b2 pawn, it's looking good for us. Alternatively, like maybe knight e7 could have been, or knight e8 could have been played, but then bishop f4 and he would renew the threat of e5. For white, achieving e4, e5 and a Benko gambit is a pretty positive development most of the time. Let's see what he does. I mean, moves that make sense are bishop f4. He probably does not want to play h3 because that just pushes my knight to where it wants to go anyways. Yeah, see, I don't really like that move for him. But we'll see how he how he treats it. Because I was going to play this move, possibly next move, regardless of what he did. So you never want to force your opponent to uh, carry out their plan, unless it's a bad plan. <laughs> there are situations where you can do that. So he takes, I want to take with the knight. We're playing pretty quickly. I, in my opinion, I haven't really had to make any important decision yet, so I'm fine with that. This is probably a good move. Yeah, he's trying to get rid of my light square bishop, because otherwise the d3 square is pretty darn weak. So um, I think that's a good move by him. If I take, though, he's, he, he's maybe having to misplace either his king or his rook in reply. Uh, I probably will take, I'm just kind of thinking whether knight c4 makes any sense. No, let's take. Let's not waste any time. And then we'll recapture on b7 finally. And uh, if f4, knight c4 looks pretty good attacking that weak b2 pawn. Sometimes you can even play d3, uh, c4 rather, and knight d3. But I think just taking the pawn and keeping our options open is good right now.
Hmm. Yeah, like now I'm considering the c4 and d3 plan. I was just thinking on the previous move, if he hadn't played queen e2 and had instead played f4 and then knight c4 and then played queen e2, maybe that was actually kind of problematic for us. We'll see in the analysis. Um, so I think he's planning on playing f4 at this point. And I'd like to keep my knight active. So that's why this c4 move is so tempting. c4, f4, knight d3. It brings about so much pressure on c1 and also this pawn. It's pretty thematic too, so I'm th I think I'm gonna do it. Yeah, let's go ahead and play it. He can't stop knight d3. And if he tries to undermine it with b3, then my bishop is uh, gonna give him grief down this diagonal. Tough position for white. They might need to play like rook b1 just to start vacating the diagonal clear pieces from the line of sight of my bishop, but uh, I wouldn't want to be in white's shoes here. I think this is very easy to play for black. And I'm not down any material. There's another line that this is comparable to uh, way back at the beginning. It's the advanced Banco. We used a slightly strange move order to get here because white had played knight, knight f3 and move two as opposed to c4. So in a sense that like commits him to lines where knight f3 is played. But in the accepted Banco, where white plays b6 after um, c takes b5, a6, and then b6, their black can also try to play a5, but it's a little bit riskier because white can often um, jump on black in the center. But I think the move order that we adopted in this game is uh, very positive for black. I think it's, it's going to be pretty tough for white to prove much theoretically there. Knight a4. Okay. So where are you going with that? Ooh, I have queen d7 hitting the knight and also hitting that undefended pawn on h3. Good stuff. Yeah, that just wins a pawn right away. Loose pieces. I could look at other stuff like rook b4 or something or knight d3, but no, this move is just clearly good. Let's play it. There's no way he can defend both. Oh, he just resigned. Wow. Okay, um, pretty quick game. Uh, I wish, wish it wouldn't uh, have been ended this quickly, but <laughs> I did post an extra Blitz video today, so if you're wanting to get extra material, go look at that. But let's go back and take a look. So first I'll show you um, the moment that I played that A5 move, because it's not very common to do this. Like most of the time, black just like tries to recover the pawn, like take on B6. Um, so A5 here, then I'll show you it in that other line I was saying. So let's say white had played the conventional banco, c4, c5, b5, or c5, d5, b5, c takes b5, now a6, and then b6. So here, I usually play e6 and undermine their d-pawn. Um, other moves are possible, g6, but uh, a5 is possible here. I think it's like somewhat riskier though, because white hasn't played knight f3 yet. So I think the line goes knight c3, intending to play e4. Black tries to beat the e-pawn of the punch by going here, but then e4 anyways, take, take, and here to avoid getting run over in the center, black has to play d6. But I think this is bad for some reason. Knight f3, knight bd7, again, otherwise e5 comes. It's like something like this, and then trying to force through e5, and black's just like not quite developed enough yet to uh, really justify having played that a5 move way back when. Yeah, I think it's queen a4. It's been years since I've looked at this line, but like take and then e5, and black is kind of on their back foot, and uh, white's going to take over the initiative. Take, knight takes, and there's pressure here. It's it's a, a task to develop the queen's the king side and get castled for black. But compared to the game, you know, I don't feel particularly at risk when I play a5 because uh, my my knight controls the e4 square. The computer evidently hates this move in view of queen b3, which is a pretty artificial looking move if you ask me. Um, I guess I could play bishop a6 anyways, because again, this, this pawn's like not going anywhere. We can always stop it in its tracks. But as you saw, like against routine play from white, they didn't really get much. It's interesting that the computer said e4 was an option there. What happens if I just take it? Queen b3 again. 
I don't know if I'm so convinced by this. I mean, Black has regained the pawn. Yeah, there's an open E file to wor worry about, and maybe I have some development problems. I'm lagging a little bit compared to him, but and that's also like a pretty specific move, E4 here. Most players are just going to do what this guy did. They kind of play standard stuff. He probably should have played E4. Um, he went G3 instead. And I developed in standard Benko fashion. I didn't want to play bishop takes b7 because I want my bishop on this diagonal. Whereas the rook is probably not going to be doing as much on the a file. I'm happy to just relocate it to the b file. e4, and all these moves are pretty standard. Knight g4, I think this is good. Because if I just played this, I'm a little worried he can just play e5. But I guess even here, knight g4 is worthy of consideration. Why is that? Take, take. Yeah, and I guess I'm going to land my knight on e5 anyways. Hmm. But I like knight g4, nonetheless. He played h3. That move I, I was saying was probably a mistake by him, because, like I said, you don't want to force your opponent to play a move that they're going to play anyways. You know, so I was showing my willingness to play this voluntarily. I may not do it exactly on the next move, like I might play like rook takes b7 first, but it's nice when he forces me to play a good move that is a part of my plan. So maybe bishop f1 directly, if he wants to get rid of the light square bishops. Maybe that was a more productive move for him. Let's say trade, rook takes, take b7, knight d2, hitting this knight here, queen e2, guarding against the entry square. Yeah, and this way, if he's kept the knight, he can stop me from playing pawn to c4. And the engine says it's about equal. Okay. So that's a clear moment where he can improve, I think. Suddenly, he has to consider knight to d3. I took on f1 when he did this. Yeah, and probably I should have played c4 right away. I think this move might be bad in view of f4, knight c4, queen e2. Unless I have something here. Guess I do. Check. Check. King g2, knight takes b2. Huh. And if take, queen b8. Wow. And the dark square pressure along this diagonal and the b-file is so strong that despite the extra tempo and just the bishop being attacked, well, I guess the knight's also attacked, white has no way to avoid losing material. Wow. So rook takes b2 is the threat. If they move the knight, I can, I can take, and I've won a pawn. And if a rook comes to b1, we can take, and he's pinned. Devastating. Huh. Okay, well, in view of that resource, maybe I'm changing my mind a little bit, but I actually kind of regretted not playing c4 right away because I was wondering if um, if he could play f4 and then queen e2 immediately thereafter when I played rook takes b7. So like here, 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 but I guess not. Bishop d4 check. check. Huh. That's so that white can't play e5 and like shut out the bishop at a key moment. I guess if king h1, is the same thing possible? I guess so, yeah. Same thing is possible here. There's probably other good moves too. Yeah, queen d7, hitting this pawn, preparing like to double the rooks even, or knight takes b2 and then double the rooks. And that mechanism works the same way. This is why you play the Benko Gambit. <laughs> this is what makes it fun. What makes it not fun is when you get no compensation for the pawn and your opponent like grinds you down. <laughs> so c4, yeah, and his position is really dire now. It's already minus two. And it's weird, it doesn't even really seem like he's made like many mistakes. I mean, the mistakes that he made were maybe like playing too many uh, routine moves. And also that h3, I think if I had to single out a move, it would be that one, h3. I think that already puts him on the wrong track. But yeah, after c4, this knight's hopping in. You've got a clear pressure here and here, and on the knight. There's queen d7, there's rook b8 after that. It's like all my pieces can find a function really quickly, whereas he's just struggling to stay afloat. So, yeah, he blundered knight a4, and I guess it's not unreasonable for him to resign, but I'm surprised it's minus 6 already. That's a lot. Knight c3, queen takes h3. I guess I'm maybe threatening this move, and it's tough for him. Let's just follow the engine line. Rook d1. This is probably good. f3, yeah, I can go take this pawn with check. Also, f5 is good. I'm trying to have the rook join the attacking equation along the f file. So, yeah, I can recommend this uh, this A5 idea to Benko players. It Just bear in mind, it might be a little risky if you play it in the true Benko uh, gambit, 
But in a move order like this, you can you can get away with it, like a5 and a quick bishop a6 to try to make sure that they can't play e4 unopposed. Like you can always take the bishop on f1. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll be back tomorrow with another standard video. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.